For 50 years, the heartbeat of Burkina Faso was the roar of two million motorbikes choking streets with smoke dust and the sound of survival. But on one morning in 2025, that heartbeat stopped. Not because the people stopped moving, but because their machines were reborn. Engines that once screamed through Ouagadougou now glide in silence. The air that once burned your lungs is suddenly clear. The same streets that echoed chaos now hum with an eerie calm. A calm that signals something greater than progress. It signals defiance. Because this silence did not come from luxury. It came from Ibrahim Traoré's revolution, a war hero who turned mechanics into freedom fighters and scrap metal into electric power. While others waited for Western aid, Traoré built his own future piece by piece, wire by wire. Today, over 200,000 motorbikes have been reborn into electric life. And for the first time, the sound of silence has become the anthem of independence. If you believe that Africa's awakening has already begun, stay with me, because this is not just a story about engines. It's about a nation that decided to breathe again. August 2025. The sun rose over Ouagadougou, painting the city in the golden haze of the dry season. Crowds gathered outside the National Assembly as President Ibrahim Traoré stepped forward, not carrying a flag, but a battery. A small grey lithium pack recycled from an old laptop, held high like a symbol of national rebirth. He called the plan Project Silent Wheels a daring move that would change Burkina Faso forever. We are not waiting for the West to clean our air, he said firmly. We are doing it ourselves. The idea was revolutionary, converting 200,000 aging motorbikes. The lifeblood of daily transport into clean, quiet electric machines powered by recycled lithium batteries. 24 conversion plants were established across Burkina Faso, employing young engineers, soldiers and university students. Within six months, the first 10,000 electric bikes rolled out silent, efficient and entirely home-built. The results spoke for themselves. With an initial national investment of $210 million, the project cut an estimated 300,000 tons of CO2 per year, equivalent to planting 15 million trees. It saved the country nearly 72 million new lean fuel imports and gave thousands of mechanics new skills in green technology. But the true transformation wasn't measured in money or emissions, it was emotional. Streets, once buried under smoke and noise, now glided with quiet purpose. Mechanics who once smelled of gasoline now wore clean gloves working proudly on their nation's future. Across Ouagadougou's walls, new murals appeared silence is power. Children pointed at the electric bikes and said, that's our president's idea. Ibrahim Traoré's initiative wasn't just about the environment, it was about identity. Each wheel turning in silence was a declaration of independence from foreign oil, from imported machines, from dependence itself. And as Africa watched one thing became clear, Burkina Faso's silence was not emptiness, it was awakening. But that awakening was only the beginning because silence, once born, has the power to travel farther than any sound. Before Project Silent Wheels, the streets of Burkina Faso were a battlefield of exhaust, and survival. Over 2.4 million motorbikes filled the narrow roads, symbols of mobility, but also of dependence on imported fuel. 60% of these machines were over 15 years old, consuming twice the fuel and producing five times the pollution of a modern engine. By 2024, medical reports showed a chilling truth. Respiratory diseases in urban children had risen 18% in just five years. Farmers on the outskirts of Ouagadougou watched their crops wilt under a grey sky where soot settled like morning dew. So when Ibrahim Traoré announced the project, many saw it as madness. Electric bikes. In the Sahel critics scoffed. He's a soldier, not an engineer. But Traoré's reply was calm and decisive. Leadership is not about knowing everything. It's about believing we can build what we need. Under his order, the military's engineering corps was retrained as green soldiers. Workshops, once repairing armored vehicles, were converted into recycling stations. 
students from the University of Joseph Kizerbo joined the mission stripping down old engines, learning how to retrofit motors and assemble battery packs. At first the failures were many batteries overheated, motors cracked wires melted under the Sahel heat, but with every setback came adaptation. Within months prototypes improved. Within a year the impossible began to move silent, steady and unmistakably African. A mechanic named Umar, once jobless, said with pride, I used to fix engines for a few coins, now I build the future for my country. When the first fleet of 10,000 electric bikes glided through Ouagadougou in early 2026, the crowd went silent. No smoke, no noise, just a quiet hum, the sound of dignity returning to a nation. By mid-2026, international observers began to pay attention. Reuters called it a bold experiment in African engineering. Forbes Africa described it as the first electric mobility revolution led by a soldier. Meanwhile, Western analysts questioned sustainability. How long before the batteries run out, they asked, can a landlocked nation sustain this on its own? But the results were undeniable. Each converted bike saved its owner $120 per year in fuel, nearly 8% of the average income. For millions living on tight margins, that wasn't just savings, it was survival. Burkina Faso's air quality index improved by 27%, marking the first measurable environmental recovery since the 1990s. Markets grew quieter, but busier, as traders moved without coughing through clouds of fumes. Even the soundscape changed birds returning to neighborhoods where the noise once chased them away. Traoré's government opened its data to the world. The proof was there. 200,000 conversions completed. 6,000 trained technicians, 24 plants in operation. The United Nations Environment Program took notice listing Project Silent Wheels among its top 10 climate mobility projects of 2026. Yet not everyone applauded. Some European commentators dismissed the effort as symbolic populism. But Traoré did not waver. In an interview with Al Jazeera Africa, he stated, they told us we could not build peace without their armies or progress without their money. But we found power in silence and silence cannot be colonized. Across the Sahel, young Africans shared clips of his speech, tagging it with a single phrase, Africa awakening. That night, while the world argued, Wagadougou slept under a soft electric glow powered by batteries once discarded, reclaimed by hands once dismissed. And in that quiet, the revolution began to breathe. By 2027, silence had become Burkina Faso's new rhythm. The fur of electric motors replaced the roar of combustion and with it came an unexpected transformation, not just environmental, but social, cultural and deeply human. Ibrahim Traoré's project didn't just clean the air. It rebuilt an economy from the ground up. 24 factories now worked day and night employing over 12,000 skilled workers and supporting another 35,000 in related services from charging stations to supply logistics. The initiative sparked what many economists now call the first circular economy of the Sahel. Mechanics once scraping by found steady work as conversion specialists. Solar-powered charging kiosks popped up across the countryside, offering both power and pride. Farmers used the same panels to run irrigation pumps, connecting clean energy to food production for the first time. At the University of Ouagadougou, enrollment in electrical engineering tripled within a year. Traoré personally visited the campus, telling students, the hands that once repaired machines will now design them. And he was right. In less than two years, a generation of young inventors began experimenting with 3D printed parts and locally built battery modules. Women formed cooperatives to collect old electronics for recycling. Rural communities once ignored now became vital nodes in a green economy trading discarded devices for income and national pride. Each factory wall bore the same mural, we do not inherit the earth, we build it anew. Economists at the African Development Bank estimated that the program had already added 1.2% to Burkina Faro's GDP
by mid-2027. But more important than the numbers was what people felt empowerment. For the first time in decades, the average citizen didn't see sustainability as something foreign, it was something they owned, built and lived. As the economy revived, politics transformed as well. Burkina Faso, once treated as a marginal player in African diplomacy, now commanded attention. Leaders from Mali, Niger and Ghana visited Ouagadougou to study the Silent Wheels model. Out of these visits came a pact, the Sahel Electric Alliance, aiming to share technology and recycling expertise across borders. For President Ibrahim Traoré, this was more than diplomacy, it was liberation. His vision of African solutions to African problems had found its proof. In every meeting with foreign dignitaries, he emphasized we are not exporting bikes, we are exporting belief. Western media, however, struggled to interpret this rise. Some American commentators admired the innovation, others saw it as political defiance. Yet even Washington could not ignore the numbers. The US State Department's 2027 report on climate progress labeled Burkina Faso a model of clean transition. In September that year, MIT's Energy Initiative sent a research team to Ouagadougou fascinated by how low-cost technology achieve measurable climate impact. Their lead engineer said they did more with less, and in doing so, they redefined efficiency. The ripple effects went beyond economics. In the streets, posters of Traoré appeared beside slogans like Our Air, Our Power. The younger generation began calling themselves the builders, not the followers, Meanwhile, in Europe, lobbyists from fossil fuel industries quietly pressured trade negotiators to limit export deals on recycled lithium, fearing that Africa might undercut global markets. But by then, it was too late. The movement had momentum. In the space of two years, Burkina Faso had gone from dependency to defiance, and its silence now spoke louder than a thousand speeches. For the first time in modern history, the world looked at the Sahel not with pity, but with respect. And as African news networks reported, Burkina Faso has proven that power doesn't always roar. Sometimes it whispers. By early 2028, the silence of Burkina Faso had crossed oceans. American news outlets that once overlooked the Sahel began running headlines that startled their readers. Burkina Faso's electric rebirth. How Ibrahim Traoré built what the West only promised. The Atlantic, February 2020. For many in the United States, this story didn't fit the familiar narrative. Africa wasn't the place being helped, it was the place leading. And the man at its center, Ibrahim Trore, wasn't begging for aid, he was offering a blueprint. In universities across California and New York, engineering students dissected his strategy not for its technology, but for its philosophy. Do more with less. Build with what you have. Lead even when the world doubts you. Economists were equally stunned. A Burkina Bay-made electric motorcycle cost just $640 compared to $4,000 for similar Western models. The secret, recycling everything from smartphone batteries to aluminum scrap. The system was imperfect, but it worked. On talk shows and podcasts, older Americans, veterans, mechanics and retired engineers began to take notice. One former Detroit factory worker said, We used to build the world's engines, now we import them. But that young man in Africa, he's building them again from nothing. That's what we forgot. The reflection grew deeper. Commentators questioned how the United States, with its trillions in resources, had lost the spirit of self-reliance that Burkina Faso had just rediscovered. A guest on PBS NewsHour summarized it perfectly. Ibrahim Traoré reminded the world that leadership is not about wealth, it's about will. And right now, America could use a little of that will. In that moment, the silence born in Africa began to echo in American hearts, not as a sound, but as a question. Have we become too comfortable to innovate again? But across the Atlantic as the world watched, Traor was already planning his next move, one that would turn Africa's silence into power. 
by mid-2058, while the world still applauded Project Silent Wheels, Ibrahim Traoré unveiled the next phase one that would turn a quiet innovation into geopolitical influence. In a nationally televised address, he announced the Burkina Energy Reserve, the first lithium recycling and export hub in West Africa. But instead of selling raw materials, Traor proposed exporting refined battery modules to regional and international partners, including South America. Others mine gold, he said, but we mine silence. And silence has become our new gold. This shift shocked economists. In less than three years, Burkina Faso had gone from importing fuel to exporting energy. Recycled lithium cells, once discarded as waste, were now being shipped to Ghana, Mali and Bolivia, creating a cross-continental alliance known as the Electric South Partnership. For the first time, Africa wasn't the supplier of cheap minerals, it was the manufacturer of clean technology. Western investors scrambled to understand how this small landlocked nation had built a functioning export system without foreign aid. The answer lay in Treyor's model, decentralized production, local ownership and military logistics converted into industrial precision. By late 2038, Burkina Faso's battery exports reached 1.1 billion enough to cover 60% of its annual fuel import costs. The silence that once symbolized peace had evolved into a weapon of independence, a power that could no longer be ignored. As global media raced to interpret the silent revolution, Western headlines grew conflicted. The Guardian called Traore Africa's electric patriot. Le Monde described him as the soldier who electrified sovereignty. But when asked to compare himself to modern innovators like Elon Musk, Ibrahim Traore simply replied, I'm not building machines, I'm building freedom. Across African news networks, his words spread like wildfire. Videos of silent bikes gliding through the streets of Ouagadougou reached tens of millions of views. Hashtags like Power in Silence and Traor Legacy trended for weeks. Meanwhile, Western governments began revising trade policies, realizing that the continent they once overlooked was about to become an energy powerhouse. In December 2028, the United Nations Climate Forum opened its session with a symbolic gesture, a minute of silence, in honor of Burkina Faso's contribution to clean mobility. Delegates from every continent stood together, listening not to speeches, but to what the silence represented, the end of dependency. That same evening, as the streets of Ouagadougou glowed softly under solar lights, a group of children rode past on electric bikes painted in national colors. One of them shouted, We are the sound of the future. And perhaps in that single moment the world finally understood what Traoré had been saying all along, that silence when born of courage is the loudest sound on earth. Morning breaks over Ouagadougou. The air is clear, the streets hum with the soft rhythm of electric wheels and the city, once drowned in noise and dust, now breathes in quiet harmony. Elderly men sit outside cafes, listening not to chaos, but to calm. Children pedal silently to school on electric bikes painted red, green and gold, the colors of Burkina Faso's flag. The markets buzz with life powered by solar rooftops and recycled batteries that once belonged to forgotten phones. In a world obsessed with power that roars, Ibrahim Traoré built a power that whispers, a power born from faith, discipline and the courage to act when others only debate. His vision proved that progress doesn't always arrive with thunder, sometimes it comes with silence. And as the African sun rises over a city reborn, his words echo through every quiet street. We did not ask for permission to be free. We stood up and built our freedom. If the spirit of Ibrahim Traoré touches your heart, share this story. Subscribe and stand with those who believe Africa's future begins not in noise, but in the sound of silence.